Founded in 1991 by patients, the FSHD Society is the largest grassroots network of FSHD patients, their families, and research activists. The FSHD Society offers a community of support, news, and information for the millions of people affected by FSHD worldwide. This is FSHD Society Radio. Welcome all to the FSHD Society Radio Show. Thanks for being here as we uh, embark on. This is our last episode of 2022, and uh, we're going to have some time to reflect today, some time to kind of also look forward to what is to come, uh, the work that has been accomplished, uh, the things that we've all done as a group, uh, as, a, as, a, as a collective, um, the, great, the great teamwork. Uh, we do have Mark Stone in here we're going to talk about. Uh, a little bit of those things and uh, so much more. Who knows where the conversation will go? But either way, I'm so glad that everybody here is watching, listening, and enjoying. Uh, if there's any past episodes I wanted to plug that uh, you need to tune into, we are uh, available pretty much anywhere you can find podcasts that include Spotify, which is my favorite platform. But just search the FSHD Society Radio or FSHD Radio. Uh, there is no uh, others that, podcast that's quite like this one where we kind of bring in people within the society, the science side as well, as well as our great uh, patients, volunteers, and uh, whatnot to all represent different aspects of how FSHD affects our lives, either directly or even indirectly. Um, we bring a lot of people uh, to the table to kind of uh, bring their uh, voice, and uh, we hope that everybody enjoys those episodes. And if you need to find them, that's where you can do that. Also, thank our uh, sponsors, Fulcrum and Perkin Elmer, for bringing this show uh, to where it is now. It's, it's, it's been a great journey, and I look forward to keep breaking through into the next year. But uh, I don't want to leave Mr. Mark Stone waiting too much longer here, as I think we've built up our audience enough. So now they're getting excited. Mark is sitting there. They're wondering, okay, what's, what is the big news? What are, what are we going to talk about today? We uh, bring in Mark Stone of the FSHD Society. Welcome, Mark. Thanks for being here and closing out the year with us. Thanks, Tim, and thanks for just anchoring this uh, this podcast, this program, this radio show, you do a fabulous job, and not just on a monthly basis, but obviously the special the specials that we've had. Most recently, our Giving Tuesday, where you yes. uh, we talked about you being Jerry, our Jer- Jerry Lewis, with uh, <laughs> you know having to loosen your tie and yeah, I, you know I think I'm going to have to do that next year. It might be the T-shirt one. You know, where it has yeah. it on the print, that's more my style, but, uh, and then just have the loose tie. Yeah, just, you know, that, I think that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. Um, it, it, it really helps bring some things to life. It humanizes the science sometimes. Uh, so you do a great service for the community. You really Thank do. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. And you do as well. Uh, since, how long have you been with the FSHD Society now? What year are we walking into? You know, we're in the sixth year. Uh, we're in year six. Um, and on a personal note, uh, Tim, uh, you know, uh, and this, this hits my heart. It hits my heart pretty hard. Um, I've been here long enough now, you know, that I've seen some of uh, the people that now I've adopted into my family. And some of my friends uh, lose the ability to do this or that, uh, find it harder to do this or that. And um, if, if, we, if we had a therapy tomorrow that stops this, it would not be soon enough. And, and, and that, uh, that impatience is, uh, sometimes leads to intolerance on my, on my part. Uh, I'm intolerant of wasting time. You know, we, we, uh, we're moving forward and we're moving forward really uh, when I look back, you know, and at the end of every year, uh, it's a really good time to look back over your shoulder and not just at the year, but to say, uh, well, you know, how far up the mountain have we come and uh, have we really made progress and have we really made an impact or are we just spinning our wheels here or there and maybe do we need to make an adjustment? Um, and 
I, I'm, I was truly amazed. I, I did it first at one at our Atlanta walk because they had met three years ago and they uh, were meeting now after COVID and all of this. And uh, I, I did just, I jotted down a little, a little uh, list and I kind of entitled it 36 months to make a difference. 36 months to make a miracle. You can, you can uh, entitle it whatever. But uh, when I realized that in, at the end of the year in 2019, we had eight companies with an active FSHD program. Today, we have over 20 companies that we're actively working with that have an active FSHD program. Most of them are actually targeting the cause of the disease to stop it. Not just, you know, some of them, a few of them are muscle regeneration uh, therapies, muscle building therapies, which is important. Uh, we need that too, but it, it's amazing. Um, you know, we had one trial end, Acceleron. We had another one begin, Fulcrum. Uh, now we have one trial in phase three. That's Fulcrum. That's the last phase before, uh, you know, before they go to the FDA and post-marketing studies. And we have two trials launching, and we have another two or three in the pipeline for, you know, for next year uh, and, and earlier, more earlier than later next year. We had 11 clinical trial research network sites, and the clinical infrastructure is so important. And I'm going to, I'll cover that when we look, when we might look up the mountain to see where <laughs> we still have to go. But um, 11 sites, today we have 22 sites. Uh, that's all through North America and, and, uh, and throughout Europe. Uh, it's truly a, a global effort. Um, you know, we had 15,000 in a database, and that's great. Uh, that had actually grown in two years from like 8,900 to 15,000, and we thought, wow, that's, that's really great. We've got 26,000 people that have aligned with us now, wow. three years later, and are saying, and they participated in some way. Not all of them are patients. Mm -hmm. But their friends, their loved ones, the the influence of our families in getting them behind the global effort has uh, expanded exponentially, and uh, and it's pretty it's pretty amazing. Uh, we had thirty six hundred families. Uh, I mean, people living with FSHD. Now we're uh, we're approaching five thousand in our database of people who have self-identified as living with FSHD. The next largest cohort group registry uh, is, is about 1,500, and that's in Italy. So 5,000 people in a rare disease is pretty, it's pretty mm -hmm. remarkable. Uh, of course, we've got more walks. We've got more chapters. It was interesting Three years before 2019, we had spent about $6 million on research, patient engagement, in other words, programs. Uh, over the past three years, we've invested $11 million, almost double the dollars. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, last year, and, and it will be similar numbers this year, uh, last year, $0.83 cents of every dollar that we brought in went directly to programs of biomedical research and patient engagement and, and awareness uh, to move things forward faster toward that goal. Um, 83 cents. I think we spent six uh, percent on admin and maybe 11 percent on fundraising, whatever that 100 percent <laughs> adds up to. Um, but you know we're, we're, we're proud of the investments we've made. We're really proud of the leveraging we've made, and, and the Clinical Trial Research Network is, it's really um, an example, but it's not the only example. Um, it's one that is most uh, visible. Uh, you know, we've invested over time about uh, a million, a million two, in um, standing up that clinical trial research network and strengthening it and expanding it mm -hmm. uh, in, in funding some of its programs. And it, 
excluding pharmaceutical trial investment. So not counting that. They've got about 10 million more dollars flowing into that. That's a 10 to one return on investment. 10 to one return. Uh, another company that we helped, that we invested in, mm-hmm. um, and, and I won't mention them, but I mean, I won't mention them by name, but we invested $150,000 to help them get some non-diluted funding, which then helps them to move forward with a with something that was very promising. Our board voted to do that. Um, they just came out that, you know, they got another million dollar investment from, from uh, a, a venture capital firm and that a major pharmaceutical has stepped up uh, mm-hmm. and is going to take their product when it's ready to the clinic, about 40 to maybe a, a, as much as $80 million. Uh, oh, no. You know, and I don't even know what ma- multiple that is. Uh, it, it, it's really a good return on our investment, so to speak. That's- yeah, I mean that isn't that is incredible. Did you ever think that that there would be that kind of attention in FSHC when you started this six years ago? Never. And I've been doing this for almost two decades. Mm-hmm. Uh, as a matter of fact, and I've told this story before. I'm not sure uh, here, but when I first came, one of our uh, uh, key researcher clinicians, I, I met with all of them, and and one one he looked at me, and I came from kidneys, and he said, kidneys. What do kidneys have to do with muscles? And I said, absolutely nothing. <laughs> I said, the one thing I do know, uh, and he's a great friend and good, uh, great clinician. I said, one thing I do know is that once research and, and Dan Perez and the mm-hmm. faithful people that built a strong, solid foundation, and I told Dan when I came, I said, Dan, I, you know, if anybody else forgets, I'll never forget what you did here. You dug something out of nothing. You created an environment and you created a platform. All we're doing is building on that platform and honoring the commitment and honoring the, the, you know, the people who have gone before us. And so um, anyway, I said once, once uh, research has brought, um, you know, has, brought it, has been brought to a certain point in any therapy, Everything, oncology, cardiology, nephrology, or neuromuscular disease, uh, it's all got to go down the same road to get to a family, to get to a patient, to get to those living with that chronic disease or that deadly disease. Uh, And the only thing you have to do and the only thing you really have to know, and I'm oversimplifying because it's got to be simple for me. Uh, the only thing you really have to know is what questions to ask mm-hmm. in order to find where the gaps are or what I call the potholes in the road. Mm-hmm. Um, as a matter of fact, it was, uh, I, I like Earl Nightingale's quote when he said, uh, all you need is a plan, mm-hmm. a roadmap, and the courage to press on toward your destination. Mm-hmm. So when I first came, I, I wanted to find out that, 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 plan that roadmap uh, and all we've done is pressed on toward our destination collectively in a bigger and broader way because of the of the voice and the volume and the impact of our FSHD community worldwide it, it it's really been great so anyway I, uh, I I have never in my 20 years uh, seen This many companies targeting a cause of a disease, a lot of times they focus on, you know, the comorbidities or they focus on, um, you know, pain relief or they focus on some uh, ancillary thing to make life better. Um, But they're focusing on stopping the disease. And there was a a recent study of FSHD globally and the ecosystem, so Mm -hmm. it's called. Uh, And one of the conclusions this management company came up with was there's an 80% chance that one of the therapies in development today will, will stop. And how do you feel about that number? That's a high number. I'm all for it. Matter of fact, when I saw it, I went, what? (laughs) Is that really? 80%. I've got to print that off. Wow. Um, There's a lot of, uh, there's still a lot of 
potholes. There's still a lot of gaps. But we've done our community. And when I say we, I don't mean me. I don't mean the staff. Mm -hmm. uh, we are here to serve the community and the people mm -hmm. that have FSHD and those who love them. That is our community. And that's our uh, that's who we want to steward well and really amplify and focus their voice. And we've done, uh, it's, it's been amazing. We have prepared for this moment in history. And we are preparing for this moment in history. But things like the patient-focused drug development meeting, we called it the voice of the patient yes. form that we did uh, with the FDA. Uh, what some people might not know is the FDA has actually asked us if they could use that as a model for other organizations like us and how to do a good voice of the patient forum and voice of the patient report. Wow. So it's, uh, I guess it's the gold standard, uh, one could argue, um, because, you know, it's being, it's being used that way. And I've, and what they do with that is let's say Fulcrum goes through their phase three trial and they present the package to the FDA. Mm -hmm. Their package will be laid right beside our patient's voice, our family's voice, uh, that voice of the patient report. And they will say, what do the families who are living with FSHD need? And does this therapy provide it? Yeah. And there is the evidence of the need for it, which was so important. Right. Yes. And it's, not, it's, it's not just about the science. It's like, well, what is, I understand the ducks four and, Okay, so then what are we doing about it and putting the money into the right direction to, to do something about it? And that includes creating that voice of the patient. We were all very aware of that was happening, the fact that it had to happen. I didn't know that it was, it was so impactful within the science community or drug development that it became more or less kind of the gold standard of the what to do. Um, so it's going to help beyond FSHD. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and I even talked to a former colleague uh, of mine who's with another disease state now, mm -hmm. and I was mentioning that. Yeah. And she, but just before she got off the phone with me, she said, oh, and by the way, Mark, they really are. She <laughs> said, we, we, we got referred to your uh, voice of the patient uh, oh. because they were getting ready to do one. Uh, they said, we got referred to uh, look at the FSHD Society's Voice of the Patient uh, Forum mm -hmm. uh, and report in, in the way we need to go about uh, doing this. So, uh, and that just speaks again to the, to the community. Um, the, the, the panelists we had in there were spot on. Um, the 600 plus people who participated in surveys that lent their voice to make this the most robust report, one of the most robust reports that's ever been ever been submitted, and complete report. And so, again, that's uh, that's not ancient history, but that lives on. That is a living document, and we're going to be doing more with the FDA. I don't want to spend a lot of time, uh, you know, talking about the FDA, but uh, there are some smaller meetings that organizations like us can host and have mm. that are called listening sessions. Mm. And, um, you know, one that I think we're targeting uh, in the near future, perhaps in 2023, would be a listening session on the importance of upper body mobility. Mm. Um, you know, we were talking as uh, the executive committee of uh, our board meets with me. They're my accountability group. They meet with me once a month, and um, we were talking about that, and for 20 minutes, I got schooled in the importance of upper body mobility, in their opinion, even over ambulation. Mm -hmm. mm. They said, you know, if, if we can lift ourselves up, if we yeah. can move, if you can eat, if you can do things like that, um, you know, you can figure out how to ambulate. Mm -hmm. If it's in a chair or a scooter or there, there are mobility aids to do that. Yeah. But, but there's not a mobility aid that much that helps you. Uh, one man said, I miss drinking, putting a glass of wine to my mouth. Huh. The simple things, right? What the we simple things. Yeah. And, and I, you know, again, my heart was pierced with that. And I thought we've got, 
I know that to a person, the FDA doesn't know the importance of that. Yeah, I don't think that they realize it. And to bring the voice of the patient out and then these um, other listening sessions that you're talking about, can he, sounds a little more pinpointed, more specific to certain areas, is, is a greatly important, which is always the side I've leaned on or into into this disease is about the patient, the people, right. the families that this impacts. So, you know, you know Mark, you're a, you're a great leader, a great speaker. You motivate people very well. You could, you could do a lot of things probably in your professional life. You said you've worked with the fight against certain types of you know, kidney disease, it sounds like, or in that world. And now this and other things I'm sure that you've done. But what, what gravitates you to this kind of work? I mean, you can do other things, but why this? I don't want to. I don't want to overstate this. Mm -hmm. And if we were sitting down, you know, over a hamburger, I would bore you with the the details. Okay, so I'll take a rain check on the hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I, it's. Um, it, it, I can say at this juncture in my life that it's a calling. Mm -hmm. It's a calling. Um, you know, the first 19 years of my career and existence, I was uh, in the local church. I was in ministry. I was a, the lead pastor. Uh, that, a lot of those things. I mean, we are, in one characterization, a volunteer health organization. I mean, we're not all volunteers, but volunteers move the ball. Yeah. The staff doesn't. We all do. Um, and, and so we're characterized, just like uh, National Kidney Foundation and some of these others that have a big staff, we're all characterized in some respects as a volunteer health organization. Well, I, I, I have done all my career there. And so uh, it, 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 it equipped me for here. Um, but the transition from that to polycystic kidney disease and then nephrotic syndrome and then ultimately here, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, there was, it, it just, as I look back over my time, there was moments in rare disease that wasn't this. There was moments in a monogenetic disease like this that wasn't this. Um, there were extreme similarities in organizations that, that became successful. All of those kinds of things went into making me me and giving me the insight uh, that all I had to do is come in and say, this is where I've come from. This is where I've seen these things work and be successful. Uh, it's somewhat a formula. I keep telling the board that I'm not a genius. I'm a great thief. I study, I study uh, other organizations like us from the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation down to spinal muscular atrophy and, and parent project muscular dystrophy and, you know, uh, uh, um, the National Kidney Foundation, all, all these organizations, good, bad, and indifferent, uh, you know, uh, type 1 diabetes, et cetera. And, and I've just become a student of what works and what doesn't. And, and there is a clear and certain path that we're following that has been laid down by pioneers uh, that have gone on long before us. So this isn't guesswork. At the same time, there's got to be things that happen that I have no control over. Right. Um, but I knew that if we marched in the direction that we needed to go, that had been well worn by others and companies pharmaceutical companies biotechs came our way mm -hmm. we would meet with uncommon success but if we didn't step forward if we didn't go not quite knowing how we were going to fill all those potholes but we knew we needed to start and we knew and we had a task laid out before us uh, if we just started, I knew some way, somehow, that things would begin to come together and, and, and forces and resources and people uh, and ideas would begin to, to, to fall into line and we would meet with uncommon success. But if we didn't go, if we had, if we stood and waited, 
till all the questions were answered and all the potholes were filled, they never would be. Yeah. Yeah. We had to still press forward. So yes. you talked about, you know, 36 months, you know, what we've done in 36 months. What is the next 36 months? look like? You, you kind of mentioned like looking up at the mountain. Yes. We are. Yeah. Hey, you know, I, I uh, and I'm, I'm going to read this so I get it right, but uh, this came up in really in our staff plan time. And, and uh, I, you know, I wrote it down. Uh, what does success look like? So this is like a summary and then I'll, I'll answer your question real specific. Success to us looks like better patient understanding driving better, better clinical research, leading to better trial design and implementation to provide an arsenal of effective therapies which patients everywhere can access. Understanding clinical research, mm -hmm. trial design and implementation so that we can have effective therapies, but don't stop there. Right. Because Arsenal. you can have an, a, a therapy and nobody be able to get to it. Mm. That ev people everywhere can access. Yeah. So those are, those are kind of our guiding principle. Those, that's, a, that's almost a guiding statement. Mm -hmm. How do we now craft and what does the next 36 months to make a difference look like right. if we okay. go on that basis? If we take those five ingredients that are, are represented in that one statement, and what we need to do, the challenge before us now is to finish getting. Um, it, it, now I'm now I'm looking at a pipeline. We started with a therapeutic accelerator. I think now, uh, over the next. 24 to 36 months, and this is a forward-looking statement. I say that for our chief science officer because, you know, he's going, <laughs> I don't know. We don't know that yet. You know, yeah. scientists have to, you know. So this is a forward-looking statement. I'll, I'll, I'll just mention that. But I believe that we can coalesce the global research community just mm -hmm. like we did in 2019 with the industry collaborative that – that they're focused now on these validated markers and these validated measures. And I think we, I think it is our obligation to produce in the therapeutic accelerator process, a, an FDA guidance document that gives clarity to, um, and, and it would come from our, our key opinion leaders, our researchers, our clinicians, it would come from our clinical trial research network. We wouldn't be sitting mm -hmm. in the back room doing it, but we could coalesce it, we could represent it, we could get the parties around the table, that's what we do. And then we could create a guidance document for the FDA that would be uh, uh, on clinical measures and moving those things forward. I think every pharmaceutical that's in our space now would say, please do this. Mm -hmm. This is an absolute must and necessity. Mm -hmm. There's another area that we've got to focus on. And really it just came up this year. And so we've spent this year uh, really building out this program, this project, this initiative. I hate projects and programs. I like initiatives better. It's just yeah. action oriented word. Um, but it's, it, it, there is a, there is a, you know, one getting measures validated is absolutely essential in clinical trial readiness from the science side, yes. but, but we have pressure tested our clinical network and our patients, the, 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 the trial ready patient community, mm -hmm. and it's been found wanting. Mm. It, we, 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 don't, we don't have the capacity in either of those areas that's going to be absolutely necessary to handle the pipeline that's coming our way. Okay. The, the pipeline that's coming our way is good news. It is, but if we're not able to answer that need, right, that's, that is the risk. Here's uh, it, coming from a rare kidney disease, a CEO, um, 
the one thing that no pharmaceutical could do is they could not fill a trial. And so they mm. would have a drug that worked yeah. in 25 or 30 people and they were shooting for 85 or 70 and they would shut down the trial when they ran out of money or ran out of time. And people who were in remission on the active ingredient, uh, they relapsed. They relapsed, yeah. Because they took it away. Uh, they can't put it on the market. They can't try it. That's one aspect. We also are finding out with, the, with all of the clinical trial research network sites that are doing FSHD specific study, those 22 sites, they're, they're neuromuscular centers. So they're not just doing FSHD research. Mm -hmm. They're doing spinal muscular atrophy uh, clinical trials. They're doing Duchenne's and, and uh, you know, they're, they're doing uh, all neuromuscular trials. Some large institutions, the UCLA's of the world, all that, they might be doing 30 to 50 trials at any one point in time. Well, you only have so much square footage in a building. And there's only so much time on the schedule. Right that a doctor can come in and that you can do, you can take someone through a three or four or five hour trial. Mm -hmm. And so the, 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 the fact that we need, we believe in the next three years, eight to 10,000, what we call well characterized uh, families, patients, I, I hate to call them that, but people living with FSHD um, that are clinical trial ready. It's right. going to take eight to 10,000. And like I said before, we've got about five right now. Uh, and we, it's taken us all our whole life to get five. <laughs> it's taken us the last 30 some years to get 5,000. Um, so we need to double that number in the next three. Hmm. Um, but we also need to stand up, I believe, and I've talked to Dr. Statlin and some others about this, but, uh, and we've talked to pharmaceuticals. I think we need to stand up, you know, we have a clinical trial research network that's doing the validation of biomarkers and metrics, and that's absolutely essential. Natural history studies, mm -hmm. that's why we are where we are. Mm -hmm. But we just need some clinical trial sites that are equipped to do clinical trials in FSHD that are willing to, and that they have the space and, and, and the interest uh, to. And we can network them together so that we can stand up and ramp up. Any pharmaceutical could stand up and ramp up a clinical trial site quicker than going to each individual site times 30 or times 40 or times 20. Um, and we can better guarantee we can't guarantee solely, but we can better guarantee that the trials will, the sites will be stood up quicker, they'll be enrolled quicker, and they'll get good outcomes quicker. Now, the medication might not work, and we can't help that. Right. But we can, we can, we can do our share, the lion's share, of ensuring that there's enough families that are well characterized and well qualified to participate in the trial and that there are enough sites to, to, mm -hmm. to implement the trial globally. This is a, this is going to be a global effort. Um, and then the only other thing is we're already focused with the FDA uh, or not with the FDA. We're focused on the regulatory, but, but the last piece of the pipe that's often missed is access. And so we're starting already to focus on access. And that's uh, the payer systems, the insurance companies, the Blue Cross Blue Shields, United, Aetna, et cetera. But in other countries, it might be socialized medicine, which people think, oh, well, once it goes on the market, they'll just pay for it. No, no, that's not guaranteed. As a matter of fact, sometimes there's a, there's a five to seven year delay in Wow. Uh, a nation getting access to a drug that's already been approved by that nation's regulatory agency. So, so then how do you, how do you close that gap? It sounds like there's a bunch, right? We have not enough people in this pipeline. You need about eight to 10,000. We only have five. Then you have this 
issue where, you know, socialized medicine, there's a long delay. Um, and we, everybody knows with this, de- with this disease, time is not your friend. So how do, how do we bridge? It seems like a lot of work. I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's well, not a work. No, many hands make light work. Right. And that's not, that's kind of trite. It's just a trite little saying, but it's true. Many hands make light mm-hmm. work and mm-hmm. our families support our families participation, our families really signing up for, um, you know, f- signing up for things. Or if we, you know, if we have, we're, we're rolling out an integrated health platform for families so they can track their own progress so that they can print out things almost a passport and take it to their doctors so that they, it's going to be a useful tool for them, but it's also going to help us know them better to provide for them better. But, you know, people have to participate. People have to sign up for that. So it's going to take all of us. Um, Of course, resources are important. The interesting thing about this though, and we've done this since I've been here, uh, when we've engaged pharmaceuticals to help pay for something we've said hey we'll match it Mm. well that's delightful for them yeah but pharmaceuticals can get behind this effort too Mm -hmm. um and we've got a we've got quite a few of them and we've got quite a few of them as you know several of them beginning to go into the clinic now and they would certainly need this now we're not selling people's names we're not Actually, we're not selling them anything except we're going to build this program and it's going to help you do your trial better. It's going to help you go to the regulators with good products and get it through maybe a little easier. And it's going to help you get it to families through the payer systems or whatever. Um, And again, we're taking with the payer systems in particular, we're taking uh, you know, the playbook of spinal muscular atrophy, uh, uh, cure SMA. Yeah. Uh, one thing that they did, you know, they have a one and done. They have what amounts to about a cure. Yeah. Where it's one shot, it stops the yeah. disease. Mm-hmm. Um, what they did is they went back to the pharmaceutical company and they went to the payer system and they told the pharmaceuticals, hey, this is a $2 million drug. Yes would it be okay if Blue Cross Blue Shield paid you over five years mm. for that one shot? Yeah. And they said, yeah. Blue Cross Blue Shield, would it be okay if you did that? <laughs> it would be better than putting it all out right now. Right, right. So, and so that's how an advocacy group can play an oversized role in this, in moving it forward. There are also organizations and agencies that we can engage with that can help us leverage, that can help us um, move the access process forward. Um, And again, Duchenne's, they have a global effort called Project Hercules that's all about access. And so they've already blazed some of the trail in Europe. Uh, They're based out of uh, the UK, but in Europe and in the US. I mean, it's a global effort. So we're taking, uh, we're, we're, you know, taking pages out of their playbook. Yeah. Yeah. Just like you said, you're, you're stealing and following what someone else is doing, which yeah. I'm all for, man. I mean, I great see great ideas great. all the time. Hey, but you know, just, and I, I know our, our time's probably more than up, but uh, uh, I, I will say this, um, the next 36 months, mm. two things. Number one, you said one of them, yeah. it's a lot, it's going to be a lot of work. Mm. Um it's going to it's going to take the best of us and the best you know that we can bring to the table, um, but I believe that we can do it. I, I have seen this community rally. I have seen this community say, "I'm not going to take this land down. Yeah. We're going to do something about it. It might benefit me. It might benefit my offspring. It might benefit somebody I never met meet. But I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I can do." And um, it, it's, it's encouraging to me, and I'm humbled, and I'm honored to serve alongside you, and I'm humbled and honored to serve alongside the, the people who are living with FSHD, the friends, the family, the loved ones that are part of us, um, and I believe that we can meet with uncommon results. 
if we work together, period. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thanks, Mark. That, man, you know, you, you kind of tied it all up real easy interview for me. I think I only had to ask a couple of questions to get you going and you can see the passion and your focus of what is in front of you, but in front of us, a lot of, a lot of talk about that, about it's, it takes all of us, us, there's a lot of we talk, a we before me type, type attitude, which I know I can appreciate as a coach uh, in my life, but I think you're coaching us all, you're leading us all. Um, I would love to have more people kind of, um, uh, I guess, you know, kind of, kind of lean into that when it is, when it is tough. We have, we have people in the FSHD society, the a staff are talking about the volunteer people that are um, uh, driving this forward to kind of lean into that, that, that someone's always on watch, isn't it? I mean, because, yeah. you know, there's been a you know, slight, you know, people might have slight criticisms like, yeah, but they have staff or it's not totally volunteer. I can tell you that, you know, in my other side of the microphone here, you know, I work for a nonprofit. I work for one. So it means I get paid by them, but that's because I, when it's my turn to kind of, you know, watch the door, so to speak, or I have complete focus on that. There's nothing else I have to do to help pay the mortgage rent, et cetera. My time, my attention, I have the watch and, I'm, and I have it covered, my aspect. I think yeah. people have to take that into account how much work we talked about, it, how much process, how much connections that has to be made. And you need people that are completely focused and on watch that this is their priority in their professional life. I mean, that is the whole reason why you have staff, right? To, to have people totally dedicated to that degree, right? Well, yeah. And what, what individuals don't, a lot of times don't understand and, and, Every organization starts out with volunteer leaders like Dan was. Yes. And then, yes, and then you know, it grew to a point where Dan needed to do it full time yep. and he got paid and, and we got a little staff together and mm -hmm. we grew another million dollars. Well, we weren't paying them a million. No. You know, no. we grew more money and we grew more money that could go into research. Uh, yep. We've done the same thing. We've, we probably uh, uh, expanded about two and a half times from a dollar standpoint, um, but it, it's still five to one, maybe seven to one uh, from what we're paying, and we're paying out way more money in, um, in therapeutic uh, uh, discoveries and, and therapeutic work in research um, last year, I mean, when I arrived here, we were at about $1 million in payout, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a million two or a million three. Last year, we spent about $4 million in research. You, you, don't, you don't leverage that much dollars, you know, with, mm -hmm. without people doing it and doing it full time. Right. Now, one other little aspect, pharmaceuticals, uh, engage patient organizations like us when you get to the clinic mm -hmm. because one thing they can't do is they don't access patients we do right and we don't sell names and we don't do any of that but they will um give grants in the hundreds of thousands of dollars so i guess for our donors we could ask would you like the whole organization to depend on your dollars Mm -hmm. Or would you like your dollars to be leveraged with other dollars we raise from companies or from grants or from philanthropists that go to help move the mission forward stronger? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I believed when I came here that our donors were, were second to none. And I think I told the board even, I said, we will not grow donor dollars exponentially. I think we'll grow a little bit, mm -hmm. but we will grow in these other areas exponentially if we invest well, our mm -hmm. donor dollars. And, and, ho and I believe, matter of fact, I think our record shows that we have. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's, that's the key there. And that's really what makes things really, really go and grow. And again, you look at SMA, you look at Parent Project Muscular Dystrophy, Cure Duchenne's, uh, you look at 
you know, uh, organization, you look at MDA, you look at organizations that are in our space that have done the same thing. They've taken their uh, donor dollars and they've stewarded them well, they've invested them well, and now they've got companies and corporations that are, you know, not just chipping in, but they're helping move the mission forward of that organization, not the pharmaceutical mission, but the mm-hmm. mission of the organization mm-hmm. forward. So yeah. it's, uh, and, and you got to be, no, but you got to be knowledgeable. You, you have to be trusted by, you, you know, you have to be a trusted, honest broker is what it's called, or you got to be a trusted partner. Yeah. Uh, I believe the society historically, starting with Dan, mm. has been and still is a trusted partner. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. I totally agree. Thanks for your time today, Mark. You've, uh, you've helped us out understanding the path of where we've been and where we're going. Um, and thanks for, for sharing your time with us today and uh, look forward to talking more as we turn the calendar over. You bet. Happy holidays to you and yours. You too. You too. Thank you, Mark. All right, Mark Stone, here. you bet. As Mark Stone, the uh, leader of the FSHD Society here, uh, real important leadership uh, role that he takes on. Let's take a quick break. And uh, on the flip side, um, we'll cover a couple other things. Listening to FSHD Society radio show. The FSHD Radio Podcast is brought to you by Fulcrum Therapeutics. Fulcrum Therapeutics is a proud sponsor of the FSHD radio podcast. The team at Fulcrum is working to develop innovative therapies targeting the root causes of genetic diseases, including FSHD. As the only company with a drug in clinical stage development for FSHD, Fulcrum is proud to support programs that are helping more people learn about FSHD and the critical need for research that can lead to new treatments. For information and updates about Fulcrum, visit their website at fulcrumtx.com. You can also connect with them on LinkedIn or follow them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Welcome back to the FSHD Society radio show. Thanks for being here, and I hope you enjoyed our uh, featured guest on the last episode here of uh, 2022. It was uh, Mark Stone, and and just grateful for his time. I know he's busy, does a lot of things for the FSHD Society and for us as an organization. Uh, so it's it's always great to kind of uh, finish off the year, so to speak, uh, with him with us on this episode. Past episodes, as I mentioned earlier in this broadcast is all available at Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, and so forth. Just search FSHD Society Radio, and you can find that. Um, I'm always grateful for our community, of course. And uh, a while ago, I was uh, invited, but I could not go, even though I wanted to. And we talked about it at a great length, actually, uh, during our telethon that we had. And it was um, uh, Tacos and Tunes down in uh, Central Texas, I believe. Uh, Exactly where? I'm sorry, I don't know. But... (laughs) <laughs> Ashley um, was um, and uh, was was one of the main organizers based on the chapter down there because they want to do something a little different and uh, and, I, and I'm all about that being a little different kind of getting that flavor of your area when you want to do maybe maybe it's your walk and roll still but you add a little side flavor well they kind of didn't want to do the walk and roll so they did tacos and tunes which is really successful and uh, as some of those uh, clips are available from Giving Tuesday we talked to Ashley. And uh, we talked about other uh, people that were involved within the um, uh, Tacos and Tunes. But she said she was going to send me a shirt, which I'm wearing during this broadcast here. So if you're seeing it on YouTube, thank you, Ashley, for the, for the awesome shirt. It's got the FSHD, uh, you know, Ducks Four crosshairs going to uh, eliminate it. And she sent me a great thank you card here. And uh, it always means a lot. It gets me a little emotional. I'm not going to lie, because I am very much invested in um, putting my time into 
this broadcast. It takes a lot of hours to put on like the Giving Tuesday, and I'm only doing uh, a, a small portion of that production. When I have people like Lee Reynolds on the back end helping in that regard, it is huge. So when I get thank you cards or t-shirts sent to me, it means a lot. It, it really does. And I, and I hope that's coming through uh, in your speakers here, that it does mean a lot. Um, what, what Mark invests into this and other people on staff or volunteers um, is, is remarkable to me. You know, people that don't necessarily have a personal stake in the game when they walked into it, but over six year time, you know, Mark, I'm sure has seen the progression of the disease and many people he's met six years ago to where they are now. And it's, and it's pretty devastating. You know, if we even target the early onset uh, part of this disease, young people that are dealing with this kids, it affects them even faster. Time is of the essence, you know, for them. And to have people in our corner to fight for us on our behalf is very crucial. And I get a little, you know, defensive if, if people wonder, well, where does the money go? 83 cents, you know, per year donation goes towards these, you know, uh, treatments and therapies and so forth. And Mark mentioned an arsenal. It's not just, okay, we're going to stop at fulcrum. There are phase three trials here. And what, if it is successful and deems that it does some good or a lot of good, do we just stop? I don't think so. We have to keep pushing to find the next treatment and the next thing because this treatment that they're coming with might not work for everybody. It might work for the majority. It might not. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. And honestly, it's not my job to know. It's my job to bring it to the table, to talk about it, to bring the proper people to the forum, to this you know, platform to talk about. It. And we have. And we have successfully and talked about the hope that it is. I, I don't want to dance around the negativity. There's no reason to. We know it's there. We know this sucks. We know things have to be done quickly. And when you've given on Giving Tuesday and all the other times you have, um, it, is, it, is, it is felt because there's emotional dollars within there too. And if you can't give your uh, you know, treasure, as I've heard people say in my uh, nonprofit world, there's also time. And people have donated a lot of that as well, which is, as we know, as valuable, if not more valuable than money for sure. I know I, I would say so. And that's not unrecognized. When you think of all the professionals within the FSHG Society staff, some that are tied to the disease directly or indirectly, they're still bringing their talent and their time, and we need all of it. In order for that to be, they are on staff for that reason. And then that's where I get a little you know, defensive on it. But going back to Ashley and her thank you card, thank you, Ashley. Uh, One million FSHD families, thank you. One million. I think it's more. I think we all agree with that, but definitely a great representation. And uh, maybe next time, if you do the tacos and tunes, I think I'm going to have to go because I love tacos. So this is what we're going to do. We take one more last break. Always want to thank our sponsors, and and, uh, Perk and Elmer is one of those. So we're going to hit that break. And then uh, when we come back, we'll close up shop uh, on, on this episode and the year of the FSHD Society Radio Show. Today's FSHG Society Radio Show podcast is brought to you by Perkin Elmer Genomics. Perkin Elmer Genomics, a global leader in genetic and genomic testing, knows that getting a diagnosis matters. That's why Perkin Elmer Genomics offers a comprehensive portfolio of test options to answer the complex medical questions that will inform care decisions and provide patients and their families with the best possible outcomes. Using the newest and most innovative technologies coupled with expert genomic interpretation, Perkin Elmer Genomics provides diagnostic solutions for a range of conditions from broad approaches such as whole exome and whole genome sequencing for rare disorders to target gene testing for neuromuscular disorders, including FSHD type 1 and type 2, and Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Talk to your healthcare provider about exploring the testing options available through Perkin Elmer Genomics and visit us at PerkinElmerGenomics.com. Perkin Elmer Genomics, radically rethinking genomics.
Welcome back to the FSHD Society Radio Show. Thanks for being here. And thank you to our sponsor, uh, Perkin Elmer, for helping bring this show. And we started the show seven-ish years ago. And I honestly been doing podcasting as a hobby before this. Uh, it's still kind of a hobby, more of a passion, right, project. But, um, oh, man, it's, 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 it's been about 15 or so years before people all had a podcast. And then it was inundated and saturated and so forth. But there's still some great ones out there. And uh, for those that are listening to this one, I appreciate you taking some time to um, put the show in your schedule uh, when new episodes raise and tell your friends. Uh, also, you can be a part of the FSHD Society community even more. There's the Women on Wellness group, Feeling Fit with FSHD, and um, a, a, a group that I think we need to be honestly more and more aware of, we kind of talked about before the break, is that Early Onset Parents Roundtable and that chapter. There's so many ways to get involved into the group, which is where you know, some of those donated dollars go to, to help support these programs, help support the families and the people that have this disease, because we have to still deal with it now. You know, we're in it now, we need support for it. And then of course, money dollars going to the treatment and other things that we need to attack this disease. Um, as we go into, you know, 2023, there's always hope. There's hope that more treatments, hope for better uh, news on the front. You never know what the next year will bring. I believe we're in a great place, the FSHD society, the FSHD community. And I guess that's where I want to kind of direct some of attention as I kind of close up shop for this year. And that's the attention being that we need each other. Um, there are other, or there's a similar uh, platform out there that expresses their opinion and news and notes about FSHD. And with all intents and purposes, it's, it's great to have another platform out there or a similar one as this, I think I'm more community driven. I think I'm more about the patient, the stories and how it impacts people. Because to be quite honest with you, I have this damn disease and I'm tired of having it. And I wear it on my sleeve a little bit. Uh, I get a little almost defense when people say, I don't want to let, let FSHD define me or, or that define me. Well, I actually kind of want it to define me to some degree because it kind of does. Uh, it defines my mission and my trajectory and I take my talent, what people call a talent of talking into a microphone and using it to the direction of hopefully finding a cure and maybe my small little smidgen portion to help contribute to that. And so, yeah, I, I, I guess it kind of does define me to some degree and I'm okay with that. What I'm not okay with is negativity. And when there's silence, negativity fills the void. And I don't want to be silent about other organizations that might you know, be pitting against one another within this community. And I just think it's absolutely ridiculous waste of energy to talk negatively about one over the other. So I don't want to talk negatively. I want to talk more of the perspective of why would you talk negatively about another organization that's helped finding a cure, funding a cure for this disease. The dollars aren't misdirected. No one's under investigation. There's nothing illegal going on. So I'm not understanding where the foundational piece is to point negative energy towards something that is trying to work in a positive direction. I am so grateful for the community in Canada pushing so hard to bring their people together. Uh, we, we had uh, their leadership on the Giving Tuesday telethon. I've met leadership in the Australian group working as well to help in FSHD. And not for one iota second do I challenge what they're doing, how they're doing it, where do they spend? I don't have to. I trust they're doing what they're supposed to do, and they are. And they're, they're, they're part of our army. They're part of our group, our worldwide effort. So to me, if you are going to go against the tide, if you're going to go negatively, then you really aren't pulling with us. You're pushing against us. And I'm not quite understanding why anyone would do that. It just leaves me perplexed. And I'm speaking on my my own opinion. This is Tim Hollenbeck talking. This isn't the FSHD Society talking with it. I, I, I am fed up of hearing an underlying issue of how a certain group handles the funds or this and that. There's no investigation happening. There's nothing legal going on. What are you talking about? The money's being funneled properly. Yes, certain organizations have staff members. Others don't. Depends on their structure. But mark my words, if you want to grow in a nonprofit world and help the people that you are helping, you need staff. In the nonprofit world that I'm in, and I'm hired to work there, our mission is to give medical equipment to those that need it for nothing. 
They want that platform to grow so large, they knew, their board knew they needed a staff to help, and they hired them. Not, there's, there's no guilt there. We're all pulling the same way. We're all part of the same mission. I use that as an example because this is the same thing. I want 100% attention in these people's working professional lives on our disease to help cure it. Whatever avenue or vessel or, or anything they can do to help. I want them in my corner. And I think you all agree. So as we walk into 2023, positivity should lead. We should be sticking together, not breaking apart and pointing fingers and saying, what are you doing? No, what are you doing? Oh, we're doing it better. Oh, we're doing it like this. Let's just all push and pull the same way. Knock this disease off the planet for God's sake and stop talking about other things that have nothing to do with that. Let's start getting focused on the task at hand. And that does mean community. That's why I'm looking forward to the next Connect Conference, looking forward to the next volunteer conference that we have so we know how to gear up and get ready to go at it again and again and make the conscious choice to unify instead of separate. And anything else is just a waste of energy. That is my opinion. And I know the community that's listening to this is 100% with me and agrees and are probably shaking their heads right now saying, yes, I am with you. I am in this community. I'm doing everything I can as a volunteer or staff member to knock this disease off the planet. That's my two cents. That's how I end 2022 and walk into 2023. And I know I have the support of this community that is with me. I know I do. I know you're all there with me. And we are excited to see what is to come. And I know that we can be you know, negative sometimes and get down on ourselves. And there's nothing wrong with that to some degree. Of course, things happen. Life gets in the way. Things get difficult. But that's when we have to keep pushing. That's when we have to lean into our community of people. That's what it's about. So I really appreciate everyone that listens to this show. I appreciate everyone that gets involved in the community of FSHD and fighting against this disease, no matter what group you are tied to. I appreciate what you're doing on my behalf, on my boy's behalf, on my family's behalf, and all the other people I've never met that I know you're fighting for to help get a cure to this disease. I wish you the best in uh, the happy new year as we go forward. And thank you for being part of this show year in and year out. I look forward to more episodes to come in 2023. Thanks for listening to the FSHD Society radio show. Take care.